Okay, give me a second. I'm trying to send you guys something. There it is. Uh -oh. All right, everybody. Okay, I hopefully just sent everybody a um, a file of everything that we are are doing today so that you can kind of have your own personal download uh, in case you can't see what's on my screen um, because some of the some of the images didn't didn't come through right so uh, see if you can open that up and let me know if you have problems doing so Okay. All right, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm trying to look at the chats as I as I do this. Okay. Oh, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead and put your answers into the chat. That's what you were saying. That's what you were saying. Got it. Yes. Go ahead and go ahead and put your answers in the chat. That would be great. I'm sorry. I was doing three things at once and I can't my mind don't work like that. Okay. All right, I'll give you a, a minute to do that. So I can get a get a, get an idea. Okay, all right, I coming through. I see a lot. A lot of D's, a lot of D's for 88. All right. People not sure on 89. Okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So let's take a look at problem number 88. Uh, welcome. This is the first math session of the uh, of this school year. Um, again, in the in the in the chat. Go ahead and shout out your school so I can have an idea and everybody else can have an idea of you know, where you're from. So uh, we are going to talk about one of the, um, if anybody, I'll put it like this, if anybody's in my class and I'm teaching them ACT prep, I tell them to do the easy problems first. Okay, that's why I start. Try to do the easy problem first. There you go, Jemison. Um, I see New Century. So today we are doing some easy problems, but they don't look like easy problems. They are easier problems. I put it like that. They don't look like the easier problems, but they actually are. And all of them are going to uh, be a problem that is uh, you'll see in a coordinate plane. I call them coordinate plane problems. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and start. As you can see, we are already in the coordinate plane. All right. It says a circle is drawn in the XY coordinate plane. The center of that is at point zero seven. So if I'm having any issues, I'm just gonna draw this, okay? Uh-oh, all right. I'm just gonna draw it. Here is zero seven right here. Okay, I'm gonna call that seven. And I have a radius of two, so one, Two. I have one, two, one, two. So, okay, let's try to draw this in a different color. All right, something that looks like that. And, okay, which point does not lie on this circle? Okay. So negative two, seven, I would say that that's a point. Zero, nine, there's zero, nine. 
I would say that's a point. So those two, they're not good answers. Zero, five, there's zero, five, that's that point there. That's good. Uh, one, seven. So if I go one and up seven, that's like right here. That's a possible answer, okay? Let's just check the other one. Two, seven, that's two, and here is seven. Okay, so for those that said D, you are correct. Nice job, and my pencil is going crazy. Okay, all right, the second one. I'm going to give you the answer, and then I'm going to see what somebody, you know, just get a volunteer to explain what you have done. Okay, so the answer that I got was D. Come on, pencil. Okay. Maybe I should use the annotate, annotate, annotate feature. Oh yeah, that works much better. Okay. All right. Somebody tell me what they did for number ninety-two. There are a couple of different ways, but anybody wanna wanna step in here? I just because um. It's asking if the point x negative five, um, let me move the chat, lies on the graph of the line five y minus two x equals negative 30, what is the value of x? So I took, I figured that x um, negative five is a coordinate, so I just plug negative five as y into the equation right here, and I got 2.5, which is five divided by two. All right. Very good. Okay, and Prabenjan uh, basically said the same thing. So uh, what they did was they, since this is my x, this has to be my y value. So 5 times negative 5, negative 2x, equals negative 30. And when you solve all of this for x, you'll get something like negative 2x equals negative Five, and then when you solve it, you get five over two, or finish solving it, you get five over two. That's perfectly fine. Here's another way. And this kind of goes to what we're gonna be doing today. You can always, you can graph a lot of these things to get a visual picture. If you're not comfortable um, doing all of the algebra here, just draw it, okay? Um, you will have to, if you know how to graph using intercepts, all right? So I can say, hey, one of these is x, one of these is y. And just let x equal zero and y equal zero. So when x is zero, if I put a zero here, I have five y equals negative 30. So that means that y has to be a negative six, okay? Let's let x equal zero. That means I'm taking this part out. 5y equals, oh, I'm sorry, I meant to say x. Don't do that. y is equal to zero. Sorry about that. Okay, negative 2x. So x times that will give me negative 30. So that has to be 15. Okay, so if I graph this real fast, zero, negative six, somewhere around here. It could take longer. X is 15 all the way over here. And I have a graph, I get to graph it. Now I can kind of see uh, if my Y value is negative five, my Y value is negative five, so what is this point going to be? What X coordinate is that going to be? Well. I see that it is positive, so these are gone. That's gone, that's gone, that's gone. So now I'm here, five over two and 15. Well, I see it's not all the way over here at 15, so that's gone, has to be D. Did that, did that make sense? In case you just got stuck, you can always do this, always plot points, okay? Tell me, somebody tell me if that was helpful at all. All right, thank you, Elise. Okay, cool beans. 
this is probably the more straightforward method, but this is also just something to keep in your toolbox in case you need it. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at some problems here. Can I move some things? There we go. Okay, just a quick review of what we're gonna do or some things that we need while we're while we're doing this. Okay, uh, parallel lines. Parallel lines look like this, and they have the same slope. Oh, I have to clear everything off the page. Okay, the parallel lines look like this, and they have the same slope, okay? They'll never touch, they have the same slope. Something to remember for today and throughout your mathematical career, okay? All right, and these are perpendicular lines. Perpendicular means that um, they have a 90 degree, 90 degree angle, okay? Or they form a 90 degree angle when they intersect. So if I said that this is this slope, or M1 has a slope of two, then the perpendicular slope has to have a slope of negative one half, the negative reciprocal, all right? And if I were to multiply these two, just so you know, uh, two times, if I just happen to multiply the two slopes, I would get a negative one, okay? Something to remember, all right? They love to ask these questions. You can actually do them in about 30 seconds if you know something about parallel and perpendicular lines, okay? Time savers, again, they make it look like they are hard problems, the harder problems, but they are not, okay? And then, we need to know something about Uh, about supplementary angles. Supplementary angles add up to be 180 degrees. So if I add this angle and this angle, they will both, they will equal 180 degrees. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 180 degrees. If you added these up, again, angles on the line, you add them all up, just like that, they're gonna equal 180 degrees. It forms a straight line. Uh, if you ha have angles around a point, all of these will equal 360 degrees because it basically forms a circle. I tried to form a, a circle, but the pen is not cooperating. And then we have these types of angles. They're right across from each other. We call them vertical angles. Vertical angles, and these two have vertical angles. That looks really messy. That's what happens. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go through these problems, okay? All right, so does everybody have the document that I sent uh, through the chat? Tell me if you do not, because I'm gonna let you work some out and then uh, we'll we'll discuss each one if we need to. So if we don't have to discuss it, we'll move right along, okay? No need to waste time. All right, so put a no in the chat if you did not get the document that I sent, that you could not download it, okay? And I'll wait 10 seconds for you to do that. Okay, all right, I'm assuming everybody got it. All right, so on that, I don't know what page that is, but starting at number 73, I would like for you to do all, don't do all of them, do 73, the first three, that's all I'm saying, the first three. Do the first three, put your answers in the chat once you get them. Okay, or don't do it, don't put them in the chat yet, but just make sure you have them and then we'll all put them in the chat at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna give you about three minutes to do these three problems. Three minutes for three problems. All right, ready, set, and go.
price of my life for the price of your will. You will cry, your tears will see the cry. Why she said, Remember, we made an arrangement when you went away. Now you're making me mad. Remember, despite our estrangement, I'm your man. You'll be back soon to see. You'll remember you belong to me. You'll be you remember that I saved you when oceans rise, empires fall, we have each other for it all, and then push, times to shine, I will send a fully armed battalion to remind you of my love, da 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 About 10 seconds. All right, put your answers in the chat. All right, I got two from Darian and uh, Jada Prevention. That's three. Trinity, thank you. All right, Dylan. Elise. Maya. Okay, so 74. Let's get in a couple of people. All right, so it looks like 74 um, was the one that was confusing just a few people. And all right, so let's look at 74. Good job. Um, 73 is D and 75 is A. So everybody that submitted those answers, which everybody did, I think, that put them in, uh, you are good. Okay, so 74, 74, the angle between lines L and M, I draw two, okay. L and M is 90 degrees. All right, what must the product of their slopes be? So if you saw the first thing that I did a few minutes ago uh, about, no, I don't want that. about multiplying slopes. So let's say that this slope is two, just like I did before. And this other slope is a negative one half. If I multiply them together, that's gonna give me a negative one because these are gonna cancel out. Now I just have negative one. 
So therefore, B is your answer. Again, that is a 30 second problem if you know that about perpendicular slopes, that the product of their slopes is negative one all the time, always, all right? No work even needed to be done. If you know it, you got it. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, you good. Okay. Um, was that helpful? Y'all let me know. We'll proceed. Okay. All right, cool, cool, cool. Thank you. Still don't get it. All right. <laughs> okay, Amaya or anybody, not just Amaya, anybody that does not get that, then please, where does the two come from? I was just throwing a number out there. So let's let's call this. Let's say that this slope. The slope of this line is, I know it's negative. Let's say it's negative four. I'm just calling it something, negative four. All right, and the slope of this line is gonna be positive because it's going upward, is a positive. They're perpendicular, so this has to be positive one over four. Touch that perpendicular. If this is negative four, this has to be positive one over four has to be the negative reciprocal. And when you multiply them, fours cancel, you'll end up with a negative one. No matter what numbers you put, if this is negative 10 going down here, well then the reciprocal has to be a positive one over 10 if they're perpendicular, okay? Uh, if you have further questions, come to office hours and ask me and we'll, we'll get it straightened out. Okay, let's look at the next three. Come on, thank you. Seven, three, seven, four, seven, five, we get those. So let's do 80, 83, and 84, and 85. Let's do the next four. I'll give you four minutes. Actually, I'm gonna give you three minutes because hopefully all of them will take a minute. Okay, so three minutes on the clock. Ready, set, go.
20 seconds. All right, drop your answers in the chat. And you don't have to number them. Um, you can just say A, B, C. We, we know what you're doing. Know do. Twenty more seconds. All right, five, four, get your answers in, three, two, one, anybody missing? All right, Darren, just did get it in, all right. Okay, so let you check your answers. Number 80 is C, number 80 is C, number 83 is E, 84 is A, so this one's A, and 85 is D. All right, so it should go C, E, A, D, C, E, A, D. All right. Okay, I see a couple of people missed the first one. And you tell me. Most people got the last one, so we won't talk about that one. Uh, all right, so let's look at 84. See, that one was a problem. All right. All right, if the X and Y intercepts of a line are non-zero and they share the same sign, oh, all right, and they share the same sign, I actually didn't mean to put this problem in here, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that I did not like this answer. I did not like that one, because that could be possibly an answer, but anyway. All right, which of the following statements must be true, okay? So I'm gonna draw a little figure here. All right, and they're non-zero, but they must share the same sign. So they must be positive and positive. And so I have a line, or they have to be negative, x value, x intercept negative, y intercept negative. And it has to be that. So both of those lines, um, the slope is negative on both of those. Neither one is positive. The slope of the line, neither one is zero. And the slope is not undefined. This one possibly could have been an answer. So if you put E, um, I, I give you that. I'm okay with that. But um, I don't necessarily like this answer, okay? But A is your best choice. Any questions about that? That one was a little tricky, but any questions? All right. And what was the other one that most people get? All right, so let's look at 80. Come on. All right, was this the, this was the other one, 83? All right. 
All right, given the four quadrants of x, y, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so x times y must be greater than zero. All right, so x times y greater than zero, that just means that this thing has to be positive. All right, the result, the product has to be positive. All right, so given the four quadrants, um, which of the following statements must be true? It says point P must lie in quadrant one. Well, for this to be positive, I know that X has to be either, they both have to have the same signs. So X has to be positive, got a positive X and a positive Y, or I have a negative X and a negative Y. That's the only way I can get a positive product out of those two. So when X and Y are positive, that's either in this quadrant or if they're both negative, negative here, negative here, or in this quadrant. So it's gotta be one of these. It says point P must lie in quadrant one. Nope, nope, not in two, not just in three. All right, and let's see if I can scroll down. Yeah. All right, and I see that E has quadrants one and three. All right, so that's why that is E. Okay, did that one make sense? And is there any other out of that group that just did not make any sense? Okay, I'm trying to look at questions. Okay, thank you, Darian, for your, for your feedback. Okay, all right, if not, we're gonna keep it moving, all right? Cool, cool, cool. Tight, 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 all right. And I got a few more minutes. Let's clear this. All right, look on wherever number 77 is in your, in that document. All right, we'll do all four. We'll do all four here. Well, let's do first one together and then we'll do the rest. Yeah. Okay. So if I did number 77, uh, take one minute. I want you guys to try it first and then we'll talk about it. All right. Mark said, where's my clock? And go. One minute on the clock. Take about 10 seconds to finish up. And if you're done, you can put your answers in the chat. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right. Okay. So. Everybody said B. Everybody is correct. All right. No need to talk about it. All right. So I want you guys to go to 78, 79, and 81. Let's do those three. And I give you four minutes to do it, and then we'll finish it up. Twenty seconds, ladies and gentlemen. All right, 
take about 10 seconds to drop your answers in in the chat. All right, I see him, I see him. Okay. Most people got. Most people got the first one, okay. So B78, let's turn that off. So 78 is B, all right. So we won't talk about that one. I think everybody got 78. All right, so 79 is C, 79 is C, okay? That's where most people uh, fell a little short, okay? A lot of people got C though, and I might see if one, somebody wants to explain 79, but before that, 81 is D, 81 is D, all right, 81 is D. Many people got D. We'll talk about those two. All right. Let's do 81 first. Let's do 81 first. All right. So. Okay. Uh, you don't even have to do any math here. Give you a clue. A, B, and C, D are perpendicular and intersect at point P. So we can we can do this real fast. This is A, B. This is C, D. Okay. And here's point P. It says they're perpendicular. What is the measure of A, P, B? Is that right? A, P, B. Yeah. Oh. I don't A, B, and, and C, D, intersect at P, okay? What is the measure of A, P, B, angle A, P, B? For Benton, I was with you. I'm not sure, this seems like an error because before I drew it out, any two that are perpendicular, but this is APB. All right, so got a little debate here. Um, I'm going to change this, this answer to this question and my, uh, the book is incorrect on this. Unless Miss uh, Russell, you can correct it. But yeah, from here to here, from there to there, that's 180 degrees. So if anybody put E, I am totally okay with that. Totally okay with that. Now, when I saw perpendicular, and I originally thought about this, looked at it, I figured it was 90 degrees. That's what I said originally, because I can't see an angle, but yeah. This is A, P, B. I'm trying to make sure I am not telling you incorrectly. All right, because that is 180 degrees. So, Prevention, I'm with you on this one. All right, even though the book, even though my little answer key in my book says it is, it is D, I think it's incorrect. I think it's not, I think it's 180 degrees. Okay. So, you guys tell me what you think. If you don't agree with that, I totally understand. So for that one, I would say E. Okay. Let's look at. So I'm sorry about that. I was I was going off the book before I more thoroughly looked at this question more thoroughly. All right. Come on. 
Well, there we go. It's clear. Okay. This one may seem a little more complicated, but you should be able to do it in about a minute. All right, I got a line that's transversal. I have some parallel lines, M and N, and the measure of two angles are given in terms of X and Y, what is the value of X? So I need, I need this, this guy right here. Okay, so um, if you know anything about parallel lines and a transversal, and I'm gonna go quick so you guys can do your exit ticket. Um, these two angles, well, if you look at these two, these are called vertical angles, okay? So this is gonna equal this. And these two angles are called corresponding angles. These two are corresponding, all right? So that means that this, or corresponding angles are congruent. So this angle is equal to this angle, which are therefore is equal to this angle. These are also called alternate exterior angles these two alternate exterior angles. So you can always equate these two, all right? So that means Y is equal to 75 degrees. Okay, so if I'm looking for three X, then I need to say, okay, well, I know what Y is, and I'll say Y plus three X is equal to, this is a straight line, so it has to equal 180 degrees. Okay, you can do that. And then substitute that 75 degrees for y. There are a couple of different ways you can actually do this, but I'm doing it the quickest way I know how right now. All right, take the 75 to the other side, or subtract 75 from both sides, and I should get 105. Yep, then divide by three. Okay, and you should get 35. Yep. All right. Okay, does that make sense on that problem? Uh, I'm trying to think of a shortcut that you might have, could have done. Um, Okay, um, here is a, here's, a, here's a shortcut that you can do, but you have to get this set up first. You have to get that set up. Or I'm sorry, if you set it up from here, you get this set up and you're not sure how to do the algebra on that, start plugging in numbers. And the first number I'm gonna try to plug in is C, always C. And if my number's too big, I start to go up with plugging in numbers. If my number's too small, I start going down plugging in numbers. Okay, the ACT is really, really consistent. So um, just plugging in numbers and seeing if the answers come out correctly, then um, that will, you can, you can kind of uh, uh, dwindle down your, your chances. Okay, or take out wrong answers, is what I'm trying to say. All right, okay, I am going to shoot this out to everybody. It is an exit ticket. Hopefully it works. Okay. Um, take about five minutes or so to do that exit ticket. Okay. Make sure you put your full name in there. And um, we'll have some office hours right after. I'm going to stop sharing. We're gonna have office hours right after this. So, you know, stay tuned if you uh, wanna do some more problems with us and, uh, or you just have questions about what we did today. Okay, all right.